Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I want to introduce you to and explain what an in-out parameter is in Swift. In the process, we'll look at some practical use cases and also explore cases where using an in-out parameter is not allowed and how functions with in-out parameters transition to mutating functions in a struct. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. I have a starter project available for this video, and I'll leave a link in the description. I encourage you to work along with me, and when completed, you'll have some sample code to be able to refer to. Now if your playground looks like this with raw markup, make sure you select Show Rendered Markup from the Editor menu to display and activate the links. These links will help you navigate through the different pages. So let's get started. Let's start with the basics. First of all, let's take a look at a particular problem that one might have and how you might go about resolving the issue. In this first example, I want to create a simple function that has a single int as a parameter, so that when I call the function by passing in some int as an argument, that int will be squared. I'm going to call the function square and it's going to accept a number that's an int, and I'll use an underscore so I don't have to use the label number when calling the function. The body of the function will simply apply the number times itself to the number. This immediately shows a problem that we can't assign a value to a number, as it's a let constant. And this is the default behavior of function parameters. They are passed in as constants, and thus can't be changed. Now, one way of dealing with this issue is to instead add a return value to our function. And this will be the result of squaring the number, so the return value will be exactly the same. So I'm going to copy the code and paste it into our second code block and add that return. And I can see that now I can modify it. It's going to return an int. But since number itself is a let still, we can create a new constant here. That is the result of multiplying the number by itself and then return it. Now we can create any variable that's an int. So for example, var x is equal to 5. And then we can assign to this variable the result of calling the square function, passing itself in as an argument. And then we can print it out. Well, since we're returning this int, however, we can shorten this to a single line that will simply return the product of those two numbers. And then again, because it's a single line in Swift now, we can even remove the return keyword. This is likely the way in which you're creating your functions now that need to modify values, but it's not the only way. We can use an in-out parameter, so we can modify the argument in place without a return. This has the effect of treating the argument as a reference and not as a value, and this is known as copy in, copy out. So we can take that first function that we created, and I'm going to modify it by annotating the parameter type with the in out keyword. And when we do this, our function no longer produces an error. Now we can do as we did in the previous example by creating a variable x again and assigning it the value of 5, but we'll just call that function since it doesn't return anything, and x gets modified in place. This does create an error, however, that passing a value of type int to an in-out parameter requires an explicit ampersand, and Xcode offers to fix it for us. When we print it out, we show that it's working. Now, if I comment out this line of code and start again, you can see that the code completion actually helps us out here, and shows that we need that ampersand. Functions with in-out parameters aren't always the best solution, though. For example, you'll have noticed that in each case, I created a variable, and I passed that variable in as the function argument. In my second example here, where I return that int, I could have just as easily changed this to say that x is equal to the square of 5, at value itself, and I have no issues there. However, if we try to do the same thing in this last example, Right here, 
we get this error here as 5 is an immutable value and can't be modified. Moving on now then, let's take a look at a couple of practical examples. If you created a game and you want to increment the score each time an action takes place, you can do this. I'm going to create a function called increment score that has a single int parameter that's a score. And it's the score that I want to change, so I'm going to make it an in out parameter. And then in the body, then I'll just simply return the score incremented by one. Now we can have an ongoing variable called score that starts at zero. And each time I want to increment it, I can just call the function. And then I can pass in score as an argument, making sure that we designate it with an ampersand as it's an in out argument. And then when I print it out, we can see that that score gets incremented. Let's say that we have a person's name that is presented like Lynch, comma, Stuart. It's a string. Last name, comma, first name. You want to reverse it to be Stuart Lynch. First name, space, second name. Well, we'll create a function called reverse name with a string parameter. But again, as I want to change this name, I'm going to make it an in-out parameter. Well, when we get that name, we can separate the components of this string into an array using the components separated by method and specify that we want to use the comma as our separator. Now you can see we have an array, and it's called names. Now, each one of these elements in this will likely have an extra space, however, because after the comma, there's a space, and that gets included with the second element of the array. So we'll want to use a map function to make sure that we trim all leading and trailing white spaces. So we'll use the trim white spaces and new lines. We still have an array. So what we're going to do is reverse the array to change it from first last to last first. And then we can go back and assign back to name those names joined by a separator that will be a space. And we can simplify this by removing this intermediary names by writing it all as a single line. But I'd like to modify this by having all of my additional operations on separate lines. This just seems to be clearer for me. So we can test this out now by creating a variable to hold our name with the last name, comma, first name. And because it's an in out parameter, it's going to modified in place. So we simply call the function reverse name and then specify name as an in out argument using the ampersand and print it out. That's great. And even if the person has a double barreled name, like a two named first name, it's going to take those two first names and it's going to keep them in place as the second element. So when it gets reversed, we still have a valid name. Now, if these higher order functions have confused you, check out the links in the description for this video series that I have on higher order functions. For this next example, I want to update an array of names representing the names of people in a family. The name will be a regular string, but the family will be an array of strings, but it's going to get updated in place, so I must make it an in out parameter. So this means that we can mix and match. Not all function parameters need to be in out or not. Then within the body, we can simply append the name to the family. So let's start off by creating an empty array for the Lynch family. So it's an empty array of string. And then I can update my family members simply by calling the function. The name is passed in as a regular string because it's not mutated. Family, however, is an array that gets mutated, so we need to use the ampersand. But Xcode, as you see, is nice enough to present that to us so that we don't forget it. And if we want to print out those members, we can step through the array. So let me finish off this tutorial by taking a look at how mutating values work within a class or a struct. 
In Swift, a class is known as a reference type. When a reference type is assigned to a variable or passed as a parameter, a reference to the existing instance is created instead of creating a new copy. So modifying a reference type will affect all references pointing to the same instance. Well, let me show you an example. Here I'm going to create a class called family, and it has a single variable called members that's an empty array of strings. Outside of this class, I'm going to create a function that I'll call addMembers that will accept the name as a string and a family as an instance of a family. Then within the body, I can append that name to the family's members. So now let me create an instance of family that I'll call Lynch family. And then I can call that function to add members like this. The first one will be add members. Name will be Stuart String, but the family will be the Lynch family. And I can repeat that for the other two members of my family. If I want to see it work, I can loop through and print the members. Now, the important thing to note here is that we were able to mutate that family's members property with each call of our add members function because the instance is just a pointer to some location in memory. No need here to use an in-out parameter. Is that the same case with a struct? So let me copy the code from that first example into the second code block, and I'm gonna make one change, and that's to change family from a class to a struct. Now structs and enumerations in Swift are value types. And when a value type is assigned to a variable or passed as a parameter, a new copy of the value is created. So modifying a copy of a value type does not affect the original value. Well, that's no good. The first error I see is that we cannot mutate family because it's a let property. Okay, we know what that error is. Struct is not a reference type, it's a value type. So in order to modify values in place, we'll need to use an inout label on that property type. The next error is that we can't pass immutable values as in-out arguments. Lynch family is a lit constant, so we'll need to change that to a var. And finally, because family is an in-out parameter, we're getting the error passing value of type family to an in-out parameter requires an explicit ampersand. So we'll need to add that in front of all of our family arguments. And when we test it now, we're good. But to finish this off now, let's just go back to that class example above and copy it into this next code block. Since that add members function is always going to be applied to an instance of a family, it makes sense not to have this function outside of the class, but we can make it an instance function by moving it inside. So now there's no need to pass in the family from the caller, as it'll be a property of the instance that we're dealing with. So we can remove that parameter here. And we can remove it from the function body as well. This means that we also need to remove it at the call site and it's no longer a required argument. And since this method is now an instance member function, we'll need to specify our instance, which is the Linz family, to access the method. And this all works nicely now. So let's try the same thing by copying over that first struct example and make the same modifications. First, we'll move the function in as an instance function. And then we no longer need that argument within the function because it's a property of this struct. Then we can remove the additional arguments from the call site and add the instance name. However, when we remove the family argument, we remove the ability to pass it in as an in out parameter. And we now get this error, cannot use mutating member on immutable values, self is immutable. Well, this is similar to an in out issue. Since structs are value types, we can't mutate that value. Fortunately, the solution is quite simple in this case. The equivalent to making a parameter in out is to specify that the function is a mutating function, 
and Xcode even suggests this to us. Perfect. Well, I hope you learned something from this video and will be able to use what you've learned in your own projects. I'd encourage you to check out the other videos in this playlist to get a deeper understanding into some other core foundation topics. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you ring the bell to get notifications when new videos are released. Thanks so much for watching.